shocking evidence of covert U.S. military operations, the success of the team's mission to locate Yamashita's riches is currently dependent on their ability to investigate three hidden locations in the Philippines. However, back in the United States, Chief Researcher Bingo Minerva is investigating other possible individuals who are after the stockpile. Roland Keltz, an author and contributor to the New York Times whom he meets with, is the one who studied the clandestine U.S. activities to retrieve the wealth from the Japanese and the influential persons involved in those operations as shocking evidence of covert U.S. military operations is revealed. The group stays in the Philippines to carry on their search for Yamashita's gold and investigates three locations that are speculated to have some kind of buried treasure. In the meantime, back in the United States, Chief Researcher Bingo Minerva meets with novelist and New York Times contributor Roland Keltz to discuss who else may be searching for the treasure. Bingo and Roland's goal is to find out who else may be interested in the treasure. Keltz discloses that General Douglas MacArthur, who supervised the American occupation of Japan and was the most powerful person in the nation at the time, was made aware of the hidden riches and contacted President Truman who then launched a clandestine American operation to collect it. MacArthur was the most powerful person in the country at the time. Keltz reveals that President Truman launched the covert American operation to extract the treasure. Keltz gives evidence to back up his assertions, which indicates that individuals who knew about the treasure during that time were in a position to benefit from it. Keltz's claims are supported by the evidence. It has come to light that General MacArthur was complicit in the utilization of the plunder that the Japanese had stolen during World War II and had access to all of these treasures, including precious metals and stones that belonged to the Japanese government, as well as goods that belonged to selected individuals. This information was exposed in a recent book. During the course of the Cold War, covert operations were funded by gold that had been retrieved from Yamashita's treasure. This practice continued for several decades. According to the legend, in order to gain the maps and information necessary to locate the buried riches, General MacArthur and his cohorts resorted to torturing individuals in order to get what they wanted. It is said that the Black Eagle Trust Fund, which is thought to be in existence even now, is used to pay clandestine CIA operations, including as efforts to retrieve Yamashita's riches. John Casey and his crew have returned to the Philippines in order to continue their search for Yamashita's riches. They have found a collapsed tunnel that could perhaps bring them to the treasure, but before they can do that, they need to excavate the entrance in a safe manner first. The miners start their digging once the location has been secured, and they are ecstatic with the discoveries they make inside the tunnel. On the other hand, they are aware of the possibility of ground collapses and make the decision to properly secure and bolt the door before proceeding inside. During the course of their exploration of the tunnel, they come across chisel marks on the wall, American numbers painted on the tunnel, and a knife handle that is reminiscent of a K-bar, which is a type of combat knife used in the military. The discovery of these artifacts, which provide vital evidence about the age of the tunnel, as well as the likely involvement of American POWs in its construction, adds to the excitement of the prospect of uncovering hidden treasures and revealing the secrets contained beneath. They believe that General Yamashita concealed loot worth billions of dollars, including in this mountain, and that Yamashita buried some of it here. They have found a collapsed tunnel that could perhaps bring them to the treasure, but before they can do that, they need to excavate the entrance in a safe manner first. The miners start their digging once the location has been secured, and they are ecstatic with the discoveries they make inside the tunnel. On the other hand, they are aware of the possibility of ground collapses and make the decision to properly secure and bolt the door before proceeding inside. John and his team are searching for a lost treasure, and they have recently discovered an abandoned tunnel that has been reopened. They make the decision to send a camera into the tunnel to take images, despite the fact that it is not yet safe for them to enter it. They are doing an investigation of the tunnel, and as they do so, they notice chisel marks on the wall. These marks suggest that the tunnel may be rather old. They also find American numbers painted on the walls of the tunnel, which leads them to believe that American prisoners of war may have been involved in its construction. As they proceed with their exploration, they find a knife handle 
that has marks that are similar to those on a K-bar, which is a type of combat knife used in the military. This artifact has the potential to reveal useful information regarding the tunnel, as well as the individuals who were engaged in its construction. The narrator's expressions of anticipation around the investigation of a mysterious artifact that has tremendous historical significance are ratcheting up the level of excitement. The narrator is quite excited about the prospect of unearthing other hidden treasures and deciphering the mysteries that are contained within them. To be able to persevere through the never-ending challenges that come with being a treasure hunter, you need to have a certain kind of personality. Not only is the job that must be done on a daily basis challenging, but there are also a great many other challenges that must be surmounted, particularly when it comes to making difficult decisions in the face of very long odds. Due to this factor, it is virtually inevitable that the treasure hunters on any given buried treasure reality show will be unsuccessful in their efforts. Despite the fact that the success rate was already known beforehand, it is nonetheless interesting to follow the trip of the searcher and any history that is discovered along the way. Team Lead John Casey is searching for the buried wealth of General Yamashita Tomoyuki on the island of Luzon in the Philippines. He's attempting to locate the treasure by following meticulously hidden clues. Despite all of the show's best efforts, the first season, entitled Digging Up Lost History and Lost Gold of World War II, resulted in nothing but dead ends. When the show was restarted for season two, the title of the new season was Will a New Crew Find the Lost Gold of World War II? This new season included a new crew that appeared to operate a lot wiser with much better equipment which resulted in the team having more success. Bingo Minerva, the head researcher, used her connections in the United States to find a famed treasure hunter who had previously spent a significant amount of time working with the Philippine government. Since this treasure hunter happened to have many treasure maps, it was only logical to bring him on board the expedition. Because of his expertise, the group was able to make an informed decision about where to dig by combining it with data from NMR scans, seismic scans, and surveys. As a result, they dug in the appropriate location. Do not forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications to the the first to know when the next post is up. The team used personal videotapes recorded by a previous treasure hunter who spent 30 years in the Philippines and deciphered the coded treasure maps in order to end an intense five-month-long excavation with some actual success. They finally found a void area after spending several weeks drilling through the side of a mountain with a horizontal drill while working beneath a waterfall that was 300 feet deep. The space has the potential to be a treasure chamber. Using a snake camera, they spotted what appeared to be crates of ammo. Do the crates contain any valuables? How exactly do they plan to retrieve them? And will the authorities truly let the team keep whatever they might find during their investigation? When the team begins to get excited about their discovery, they are suddenly startled by a second chopper that appears to be following them and spying on them. This happens like clockwork. Everyone is on edge as a result of this, in addition to the unannounced safety inspectors who took plenty of images of the team's progress and the various cautions that others have given, as the level of danger appears to have significantly grown. Because of this unwelcome attention, there is now a sense of urgency to retrieve the treasure as swiftly as possible. Team finally makes breakthrough finding. Want to know more? Click on the next video now.